Once upon a time in the wide and rough lands of Mongolia, in 1206 AD, the horses ran quickly and the wind blew strongly. The tribes didn't get along very well, always fighting and never sitting together in peace. In this wild world, a brave leader named Genghis Khan came to power. Genghis Khan determined, said, Enough of this fighting. I'm tired of these tribes always battling each other. From now on, we're one big family, a very big family. One of his warriors, confused, asked, uh, How big? Genghis Khan, smiling, replied, As big as the whole world, we're going to take everything. He wasn't joking. Genghis Khan brought together the Mongol and Turkic tribes, and within a few years, he had built one of the strongest armies in history. They were fast and hit hard, like the special forces of the 13th century. As the Mongol warriors calmly rode through villages causing chaos, one warrior looked at the burning houses and said, Our boss, did we go too far? Genghis Khan simply said, Too far, there's no such thing in war, keep going. With Genghis Khan as their leader, the Mongols quickly took over China, Central Asia, and even Persia. How did they do it? Speed, smart plans, and lots of horses. In scene two, the Mongol army rides across the vast steppes, approaching the gates of Baghdad in 1258. Monkey Khan, the leader of the Mongol forces, is planning the infamous siege with his generals. He instructs them with a hint of sarcasm, saying, so, we're going to knock on the door, ask them to surrender, and if they say no, well, you know what to do. One of his generals nods, understanding the grim task ahead, and responds confidently, Got it, boss. Knock, knock, then smash. As the siege unfolds, the city is overtaken, resulting in the destruction of buildings and towers, with smoke rising in the distance. Not all of Mongol history was pretty. When they took Baghdad in 1258, they ended 500 years of the Abbasid Caliphate in just a matter of days. Talk about a dramatic exit. Once the dust has settled, Monkey Khan reflects on the chaos and destruction around him, commenting wryly, well, that escalated quickly, but hey, we got ourselves a new city. Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, chose a different path from his famous ancestor. Instead of just conquering and destroying, he wanted to rule. He set up the Yuan dynasty in China and started acting like an emperor. Kublai's court became so famous that even Marco Polo, the famous explorer, came to visit, making it one of the most popular places to be at the time. But not everything went as Kublai planned. He really wanted to conquer Japan, but each time he tried, terrible storms destroyed his fleet. He once sighed and said, I wanted to conquer Japan, but the ocean really doesn't like me. Despite these setbacks, Marco Polo found a way to joke about it, saying, maybe it's time to invest in umbrellas. Kublai smiled a little and replied, not funny, Marco. As time went on, the Mongol Empire started to fall apart. Like all empires, it couldn't last forever. Internal fighting began to break it up, and by the late 1300s the Yuan dynasty had fallen. With that, the Mongol Empire started to crumble. A Mongol general, seeing the empire's borders shrinking on a map, threw his hands in the air and said, Wait, what do you mean we lost China and Persia and everything? It wasn't easy to control such a big empire, but even after their downfall, the Mongols left a lasting mark on the world. They helped spread trade along the Silk Road and brought new inventions like gunpowder, connecting different parts of the world in ways no one thought possible. As the story of the Mongols comes to an end, we return to the wide steppes where the sun is setting. Modern-day Mongolians are seen herding their horses, playing traditional music and laughing together. The Mongols, who started as simple nomads, had once ruled the largest land empire in history. Yes, they caused a lot of destruction, but they also built great roads, spread important ideas, and showed the world how fast a horse could truly go. In the distance, as the sun sets, it feels as if Genghis Khan himself is smiling proudly, saying, I told you we'd take everything.